Hi folks, this is Karim Rauf from OTV as well as the channel. Today we will continue our lab, the Marvel Studio Lab. This is the video number seven. So we will today we will, or we have been discussing in the previous video the following. We have been discussing uh, what is ADHSP and what it, why it is used and what is the IP scope, <coughs> what is the least IP time <coughs> and why it is used, <coughs> and then after configuring or sorry after after discussing the concept of the DHSP, uh, we begin configuring the DHSP adding the, the DHCP server role from the server manager and then begin uh, authorizing the DHCP then <coughs> configuring the IP scope and then define and uh, distribute the IP address of the DNS and WINS and router or gateway so the DHCP will be responsible for assigning IP addresses to the workstations in the domain and it will be also responsible for distributing the IP address of the DNS and the WINS server and the router or the gateway to get out to the internet so all of this will be configured uh, after adding the DHCP server role from the server manager and then after that uh, this will be the master DHCP and then we will configure another DHCP which will act as a DHCP partner or a DHCP failover partner so where is the second DHCP it will be configured on the first domain controller it will act as a DHCP partner and then we configure the HTTP failover uh, this is a bond or there, there will be a, a, a replication between the DHCP master and the DHCP partner and they both will be responsible for distributing IP addresses to the workstation so for example if we have 100 IP address uh, both DHCPs will be responsible for distributing 50 IP addresses so the master DHCP will uh, distribute 50 and the partner will distribute 50 this is called load balance so when when when, when we configure the dhcp failover so we have uh, configured the dhcp master and then we have configured the dhcp partner and then we will configure the dhcp failover which is the bond or with which is the rela relation between these two dhcps they will replicate their configuration between each other and they will work as a failover in an option called load balance and as I said before the load balance it is a, an option that we will use to make these two DHCPs uh, distribute IP addresses in the same time as I said before if we have 100 DHCP uh, the first or the master DHCP will distribute 50 and the partner will distribute 50 you can change the uh, percentage of uh, uh, distributing of IP addresses this is uh, this can be uh, configured when you just configure the HTTP failover anyway this is uh, uh, one of the options of the DHCP failover you can make it or you can set it up to hot standby with or hot stand which means that only one DHCP will be responsible for distributing IP addresses and the other will be uh, stopped or it will be in a standby mode when the DHCP master is down the DHCP partner will be responsible for distributing or it will go online and distribute IP addresses okay then we have configured quota so we have configured a file server role on this uh, second virtual machine or second domain controller and then we begin to configure quota a quota it is a, a data limit we put on our uh, folders that we will share so we have a file server and we have folders on this file server we will share it and we will put quota uh, data limit on this folder so uh, uh, each folder that will be shared will have a certain amount of data to be, to be put on it for example we can limit the data on a shared folder for example to be 10 gigabyte or so and we also have something called file screening what means that uh, we will limit uh, or we will block certain type of files to be put on our shared folders for example we don't need to have audio and video uh, to be put on our shared folders because these shared folders are for work files only for example excel word and so and so because we don't need uh, audio and video okay and all of this will be done using the file server resource manager okay and then we configure the WSOS we have said before that WSOS it will be responsible or it is a central location that will be responsible for distributing uh, the operating system updates okay to all of the workstations and servers in the domain okay and we have set different options when we configure the WSOS for example uh, the type of system updates uh, that he will get for example we can configure WSOS to get updates for Windows 10 
uh, updates for Windows Server so we need to define what type of system updates WSOS will go and communicate with Microsoft website and download it okay and at what time so you can uh, assign a time or make the WSOS uh, download the Windows updates from the Microsoft website in a certain time that your users are not working so the internet bandwidth will not uh, be a problem because when you download the updates this will take a lot of uh, internet bandwidth because they are multiple updates for multiple systems okay so you can do this at midnight for example and you can make this download process to be automatic or manual so you can make it automatically at uh, midnight and to be for example maybe once a day or you can make it for example twice a day maybe at midnight and then at dawn for example so all of this can be done and uh, during configuring WSOS he will ask if there is a proxy or not and what type of updates you need to download so there is a uh, uh, there is the system updates or the uh, there is the not the type of updates the type of operating system updates you need to uh, download and there is the type of updates so for example there is uh, uh, a couple of uh, 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 types of updates for example there is critical updates there is security updates there is definition updates critical updates they need to be installed immediately to rectify a security problem or maybe a, a something uh, concerning uh, some bugs in a program for example maybe the office maybe there is a bug in the windows okay uh, I mean a technical bug okay and there is also some uh, updates that fix security bugs so all of these are critical or the critical updates they need to be installed immediately this is a kind of update and we have a security update which is also a kind of update this is related to security bugs okay this also should be installed automatically or not be installed immediately but not as much important as the critical it is less in importance okay and then we have the uh, definition updates this is related to uh, maybe uh, uh, antiviruses update if you have a windows defender this considered to be a definition update so it's only uh, definition updates uh, these are kind of updates that for example update uh, the McAfee or update, uh, update the antivirus so this is called definition updates anyway so all of this is configured when you begin the initial or after adding the WSOS server role he will ask you to configure all of these options and then after finishing all of this configuration we have created different computer groups so the WSOS uh, group updates according to their importance for example as I said before there is critical updates security updates so there is a groups or a, there is a grouping for updates and there is a grouping for computers so you can group computers in WSOS according to their uh, role for example you can make a group for servers you can make a group for uh, workstations you can make a group for example for workstations for windows 10 you can make a group for uh, computers for windows 7 this is very useful because we can uh, by grouping computers in groups we can define a certain type of updates or uh, a group of updates to be installed to a group of computers and we make a group called test this test computer group will contain computers from all of departments we will select a computer from each department and put it in the WSOS in a group called test this group we will uh, test all of the Microsoft updates to be installed to this group of computers if they are succeed and there is no problems then we can go widespreadly of deploying these uh, updates to all of the other servers or workstations so this is a best practice when you install the WSOS to have a, a group of computers called test and select a couple of computers from your department and put them as test uh, uh, computers for the Microsoft updates because there is some some of the Microsoft updates have bugs and they actually doesn't solve it for it's for example complicates complicate things so you need to test the Microsoft updates before widely spreading uh, or to widely spread to install them so all of this we have discussed in the previous video in this video we will uh, begin configuring something called Active Directory home uh, directory or active directory user home directory this is uh, i can show you t show you all in a graph 
so what is this uh, home folder let me show you all here you have your server which is acting as a file server we have done this before and then we have our hard disk of our file server okay and then we will have a folder this is called users this folder we will have all of our active directory uh, uh, home or active directory user home folders created in it what is active directory home folders it is simply that every user in my active directory will have a subfolder from this folder so he can exit and put his personal data on it so let's see this for example what we will do we will share this folder so all of our active directory users can uh, reach it and then we will put uh, certain permissions on this uh, shared folder for example we have a group called domain users this is an active directory a built-in group that contains all of our users in the domain so we will share this folder so all of our active directory users can reach it and we will give the active directory group that is called domain users full control over these over this shared folder so the uh, the users can do whatever they like with their folders we will see in a moment the permissions for each folder so now what we will do this are the permissions on the folder and then we have a script this script we will use is called home folder permission scripts this is script what you will do it will create a folder for every user in the domain so here is for example i have an active directory a username called care of so this script will create a folder under users by my name and then we, for example we have another folder for hulk for example it will be created by his name active directory username and then there is another folder created for Thor with his active directory username and then we have another folder for widow with her active directory username so all the all of these are folders okay just a moment are subfolders from the main folder okay and all of these folders are named according to our active directory usernames okay so for example i have a user in the active directory uh, karim raouf its username is kera of one so i will have a folder by my username under users and then say so before this will be the uh, mission of the script it will create subfolders in the main folder every subfolder will be the name will be by the name of uh, the active directory username okay so these folders are subfolders here we can see this and then the same script will assign uh, permissions so here for example this is the active directory username of Karim and this is the active directory user of Hulk and this is the active directory username of Thor this is the active directory user of Widow and then we will have permissions this is the main folder the the permission of full control for domain users will be propagated or it will be inherited to the subfolders so here this is done automatically you will not assign this uh, permission using the script okay so the script doesn't assign this permission but what it will do it will assign another permission this is smb share permissions so all of these are inherited from the folder here all of these are inherited okay so the script will create the subfolders and the subfolders will inherit the full control of domain users on the subfolders and then the same script as I said before the home folders permissions script it what will do it will put the NTFS permissions so here let's see what is the permissions that will be added here we can see for example that this is an NTFS permission it will give Karim full control over his folder for example Hulk will not have full control over Kera of one folder only Karim will have full control over his folder okay so he will have full control over his folder only we can see here for example that Hulk will have full control over his folder and Thor will have full control over his folder Widow will have full, con full control over her folder so the home folder permission it will create subfolders and it will assign NTFS permissions every user to every user every user will have full control over his a home directory folder and another thing for this uh, script it will map these uh, folders okay or these subfolders add network map drives for every active directory user I will show you all how this also will be done uh, practically but this is the uh, concept of 
uh, creating uh, Active Directory home folders. Active Directory home folders are folders that will be assigned to every user in the Active Directory and this folder uh, considered to be a personal folder uh, so for the user to put his personal data or his work data on it and it will be uh, controlled fully by him okay so how this will appear or how this will be uh, practically uh, working let's see we'll see another graph here for example after assigning the script or after running the home folder script if you go for example to uh, uh, Wonder Woman for example this is one of the users and we get to its properties we can see here that the home folder will contain some data actually it will be this is the name of the folder as I said before it will be according to her username so the user is called Carol Danvers and her username or Active Directory username is called C M Marvel or C Marvel okay so this is her username and this is her active directory home folder name okay it will be named and shared okay in this path and it will be mapped as a network map drive as L okay as we said before here this is some information about the this character when does it, it appeared in Marvel and some you can read it if you need but what about uh, I need to see it on the PC how it will appear on the PC for the user let's see this graph so here for example this is widow when she logs in with her username or active directory username she will see the department shares we will discuss this in our lab also and she will she ha see her active directory home folder which is named according to her username and it will be mapped as an L drive and we have quota on it that we have uh, uh, discussed or that we have uh, done in the previous video so this is the user he will access with her username she will see the department share she is a member of the HR team so we will see the the folder of the HR or the shared HR folder and this is com something called global share this is a folder that is shared that is shared between all of the departments and this is her home directory folder okay that we have done using the PowerShell script so this is her uh, home directory folder it will be named according to her name and it will be mapped as an L drive okay as for the department shares they will be mapped like this and appear like this by a mapping group policy we have discussed this in the previous videos but we will uh, discuss it again uh, and see how this will be done we will discuss it or we will, we will map this shared folders using a, a group policy okay so let's go there so you need to see how this will be done practically okay so let's see how this will be done i think here we have done all of these so uh, let's see how we will use or we will have this done so we will go now and go to our uh, second uh, domain controller and then we will begin working with the uh, for uh, making the active directory home folders okay so here what we will do we will go and have creating we have created a folder called users this is the main folder that all of the active directory home folders will be created in it so we need to share this folder and put permissions on it as we have seen in the graph <laughs> so here we will go and open it and then we will take a snapshot what is a snapshot snapshot it's something like taking a backup of the virtual machine because I don't know if there is will be any problems when working with the uh, users or creating users user home folders so I take a backup of every virtual machine from uh, the snapshot okay or from the VM uh, 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 menu and then tell him to take a snapshot snapshot is exactly like taking a backup a backup of a machine okay a full backup of the machine okay and then we will take a snapshot so we have a snapshot of both virtual machines we now need to go to the users folder and share it okay
here we can see that there is a lot of activity on my hard disk because uh, these two virtual machines are taking uh, uh, or taking a part of my hard disk and working on it so there is a lot of uh, hard disk activity and also a lot a lot of ram activity because uh, we are working on uh, creating folders so here we can see that we will go to the folder of users okay this is the main folder that will contain all of the user home folder directories <laughs> so here now we will go and open the folder of users we will share this folder and we will share it in a certain way I will tell you also here we will share it okay so all of the users in the active directory can uh, uh, access it we will tell him advanced sharing and then we will share this folder and then we will put a dollar sign okay first of all here we need to put a dollar sign on this share name why we are putting a dollar sign a dollar sign will make this share hidden so no user can access it i don't need the users to go to the main folder okay i need only every user to go to his folder not to the main folder because if any user in the active directory can go to the main folder which is shared he will see the other users uh, home directory folders i need only him him to see his folder only his home directory folder only so we'll put a dollar sign to make this share hidden okay so now what we'll do we'll put a dollar sign and then we tell him permissions okay and then permissions and then we will add or we will remove everyone active directory group and put the domain controllers so here we remove it and then add okay we will add the domain users group and give it full control and we have another uh, a group called Marvel all users this is also a custom active directory group that group that I have put all of my uh, Marvel uh, domain users in it or all of the users in the domain in it so it does the same function as domain users but domain users are a built-in active directory group created by default and all of its members are uh, all of the users in my domain and they are put also in this uh, group as members automatically so here we will add also the IT so I have put three groups all of them will have full control over this folder or all this folder as an SMB share permissions and then we need to add uh, the NTFS permissions as I said before we have two type of permissions just to make it more safe we have SMB share permissions and NTFS share permissions so here both uh, have the function of controlling uh, the users to do what on the folder so here we have put also the domain users and then we will add uh, also we will add uh, marvel underscore all users and we will add the IT so we'll do all of this we will add again so we'll give it full control to the domain users not the users of marvel he will add domain users okay and then after sharing and putting the NTF so we put NTFS permissions for domain users we give it full control and then we'll have Marvel all users okay and then okay give it full control and, and the IT group will give it full control and then after setting the SMB share permissions and the NTFS share permissions we will use our script to create a folder for every or create an active directory uh, uh, active directory home folder or active directory home directory for every user in our domain using a script so we will see the script but actually this script is a little bit outdated I have updated this script uh, but when I was recording this video it was not updated completely but anyway we will see this is the script okay so we will use it the script here you are telling him what is the script here this is not the script itself it is a little bit change it so let me show you all the script after updating it and this is the one that we will use 
and actually it will be in a Google Drive link in the description of the YouTube video so let's see here this is the script here we can see that this is the home directory script okay we can check it th simply so here we can see here the script is in, in .ps1 extension here we can see that this is uh, the script itself we are telling him to go to a CSV file that contain all of our active directory usernames okay so this is a, a text file that will contain all of our the active directory usernames so we can see it here for example let's have a look uh, it will be called uh, let me see here what is the name of this one it is called marvelusers.home so that's a marvel with marvelusers.home hey, this is the one so we can open it here we can see that this is our active directory uh, usernames so here for example uh, this is Thor and this is Loki and this is C Marvel okay F uh, and we have all of these are the active directory usernames and their location so the script will go and see the username of every active directory user and create uh, a home directory folder by his active directory username okay so this is the first part it will go and see, let's don't, don't save okay so here it will go and check this location and then I'm telling him to make under the main folder users create for every active directory user a subfolder by his or a subfolder that will be a home directory folder by his name okay so this is it this is the main folder location and this is the uh, uh, the text file that contains the name of the home directory folders the, it will be named according to the active directory usernames and then I tell him to map them as L drive for every user and to give every user full control over his folder it's so it will be mapped as an L and he will have full control over his folder we will see when we, when we uh, uh, implement this script we will see how this is done okay or, or, or we will see the permissions on the folder so this is uh, simply what the script does okay but in the video it was a little bit outdated okay it will only do this for one uh, active directory user but this updated script it will do it for all users okay so here what we'll do we'll go now and complete the script so here we will I can pass it real quickly so here we can pass it also real quickly and here uh, we can go there and complete so we need to implement the script so let's go here anyway so we will do it this is a script let's go here again so this is the location I said before the location of the folder users the one that we will have our subfolders in it then we need to just a moment here so what we will do here we have opened just a moment again so here we have opened the script and then apply it so just a moment so here we will open and apply the script okay here here he asked about the username that you need to create home directory folder uh, for it but this will not be the case because uh, we have this script update so let's continue guys here we can see that there is a problem with the w source so as i said before in a virtual environment uh, some problems happened with the WSOS service especially the Windows internal database we have said before the WSOS uh, records and uh, put all of its, its reports and data in a database uh, installed on the Windows server this database is called Windows internal database so for this database to work there uh, there should be a service running in the Windows called Windows internal database if this service is not running the database attached to the WSOS will not work so we need to go and check the service so we'll see this now
anyway if we go again to the after uh, making the script or running the home directory folder script if you go to the admins we have iron or tony stark this is the one that we have our home directory folder created for it here we can see in the uh, profile here first we will go and tell him iron man okay so this is the sam account or the username this will only done for or it will be done for one user but uh, the script modified will do it for all users uh, by using a csv uh, text file okay so this is an old script here if we go and check again tony stark and see his uh, properties or uh, active directory user properties we will see that he will have uh, some data uh, written here we can see the users that the home directory folder is created or home directory folder active directory folder is created if you go to the properties and see the security here we can see that tony stark has full control over his folder but here uh, the old script uh, we have put a permission of modify but here we can see that the, uh, uh, the permission is done already here we can see it's modify but we need it to have full control not modify so this is how the script will be implemented so the script will create the folder will put permissions on the folder and will map uh, the folder as a network map drive and if we check the uh, uh, active directory user properties of this folder we uh, active directory user uh, of this let's first we will go to the uh, active directory and check tony stark if we can see uh, the profile tab here we can see that there is an l drive and there is the iron man this is the folder that we had checked from a couple of seconds in the users uh, main folder so this is how the script will be working and we'll do it for all it will be done for all of the users but this is an old script so uh, it didn't uh, work with full for all of the users but it should work for all of the users as i showed you all in the script so here we can see that the standard here we will just uh, make sure for the WSOS to work we need to make sure that the Windows internal database service is running if this is not if this is not running you will not be able to access WSOS console or even uh, do anything or configure everything uh, anything in the WSOS so we need to make it automatic okay I will make it a delayed restart just to make it work okay and then tell him start anyway in the physical environment you don't need to do this okay So I can pass it real quickly here so if you go there and we will close the account anyway so we will complete if you go again to the uh, WSOS we can see that it will work okay so I think now I'm checking something anyway just a moment I think we will go and complete it. Okay. This is the first domain controller. We will access it. I don't know why I'm access it actually. But uh, okay. So this is it. This is for the uh, creating the Active Directory uh, uh, user home directories or user home folders. Uh, I need to discuss something here. Uh, first of all, we will need to complete. Uh, our uh, scenario just a moment we need to get here for something else this is another one this is the ninth video so let's go here after creating the active directory user uh, active directory user home directories we will create uh, the uh, department shares before as you said before i have created folders on the file server and we will share these folders for every department so every folder on the file server will be created for a certain department and will be shared and this uh, department will access this folder i will remember you with something i will show you a little bit of a graph to revise it just a moment so here guys we will remember you how we will make the department shares here this is our file server and then we have our hard disk okay and then we will have for every department we will make 
a folder on the file server so we have the IT the HR the global share and then the HOD global share this is a folder for all departments and HOD it's the head of departments so we will have a folder created on the hard disk of the file server for every department and then what we will do here we will after that we will share this folder for the IT and then we will share this folder for the HR we will share this folder for all departments and then we will share this folder for the HOD what I mean by sharing for the IT we will share it for the group of the Active Directory uh, the IT Active Directory group and we will share it for the IT and share it for the HR <coughs> Active Directory group <coughs> and then we will share it for the Global Share uh, Active Directory group this will contain all of the departments and then they will share it for the HOD group so the shared folder will be accessed by a, accessed by a cert accessed by a certain Active Directory, and then we will put permissions for every uh, for every group on the shared folder. So here, for example, this is an NTFS permission. Uh, the Marvel IT group, this group will have full control over the shared folder, and we have NTFS permission group. Also, this group will have will have full control over uh, over this folder. So this is the first thing and this is and SMB shared permissions and then we will give the group of HR Marvel HR this is the group will give it modify permission over the shared folder and the IT will have full control this is NTFS permission and then we will have the group of IT having full control and the HR having change permission over the shared folder this is SMB shared permission we'll have the same okay here NTFS permissions we'll have all users this is a group that contain all of the users in my domain this is uh, good for uh, accessing the global share folder so we have NTFS permissions and SMB share permissions and at the end we have the HOD they will have also uh, certain permissions on the shared folder okay first of all how these folders will be created they will be created using a script how these permissions will be added they will be added using a script okay okay how these folders will be shared so we have first what we will do first we will create the folders by a script and then we will share them by a script and then we will put the permissions of the SMB by a script and then we will put the NTFS share permissions by a script so here we can see let me show you all this is the S NTFS permission okay it will put permissions on the folders okay for certain groups and then we have the SMB shared permissions we will also put certain permissions on the folders okay so this is done and at the end when for example we do she is a member of the HR department she will see the HR shared folder as a network map drive and the global shared folder will be as a shared network map drive this will be done using a group policy the group policy will tell him the shared folder location and the uh, uh, network map drive letter that we need to map it and the permissions will be done using the script so this is the final result okay so again what we will do let me show you all here a little bit of uh, a graph what we will do here first of all we will have the folders created and then we will share them okay and then we'll put SMB share permissions and NTFS share permissions so uh, what is the first thing we will create the folders where is the uh, script that will create these folders on the uh, file server here we I will show you all this script so there is a script called create folders here we go so here we have a main folder called department shares this is a simple script we are telling him that I need to create a couple of folders for certain departments in this uh, in this main folder so how he will know the name of the folders that he will create he will see it in a for in, in a text called folders.txt so the script I'm telling him please create a number of folders by certain names you can get them from the folders text in a main folder called the department shares what is the folders text you can see it from here so these are the folders okay he will see them and create them okay and after 
doing this this is the first step so we will use this script to create the folders and then we need to share the folders and put the SMB share permissions this is the second one we will make this using SMB share permission uh, permission script let's see where is this script so here it is this is the script SMB share permissions okay so let's go there here this is the script of the SMB let's close this one okay so anyway this is uh, a couple of lines first of all we will create an HOD share folder or we will share the folder of HOD under the share name of HOD and we will have the HOD Active Directory group to have a change permission on the shared folder and these are the four lines they are do it uh, doing it for every uh, department for example we have a folder named IT we will share it under the name of IT and then we will have Marvel IT Active Directory group to have change permission on the shared folder by the name IT this is all and then what we will do here we will grant the IT group Active Directory IT group full control over all of the shared folders okay so we will give the IT group uh, uh, full control over the HOD folder, the IT folder, the HR folder, the global share folder. Okay, and the last three lines we are telling him to remove every one group from the SMB share permissions. Remember that when we share a folder, there is by default a, a group called everyone that have full control over the folder, so we need to remove them. Okay, so this is the script. So the first thing we will create subfolders using a subfolder script and then we will create or we will uh, put SMB share permissions and uh, share the folders using this script so this script will share the folders and put the SMB share permissions on it so again if we return to the graph we will first create the folders okay by the script that I have shown you before and then we will share the folders okay and put SMB share permissions on them by using this script that I am showing you now okay and then what we will do then we will put the NTFS share permissions using the last script here we can see it from here this is the NTFS permission script edit so here this is the last one here I'm telling him to put certain uh, NTFS permissions okay on uh, the folders or the folders that I am uh, telling him to do it okay so how he will know to put certain NTFS permissions on certain folders to certain groups he will read need to read a file called NTFS group.csv so this script will apply certain permissions to certain folders uh, to certain groups using or he will know this from reading this script or to need this text file I will show you all this text file here it's called NTFS group so here we can see here for example that this is the text file here we can see that this is the folder okay global share HOD IT HR this is the folder and this is the permission full control modify read and execute list folder read and write so these are the permissions and these are the Active Directory group assigned this permission so Marvel IT will have full control over the global share uh, Marvel IT will have uh, full control over the HOD Marvel IT will have full control over the IT folder Marvel IT will have full control over the HR folder okay here we can see for example that the HOD group will have modify permission over the HOD folder and the HR group will have modify permission over the HR folder so this is the script simply okay so the script will what will do it will read this text file and apply the permissions okay also in this text file so again we will revise first of all what we will do we will create the folders okay using a script and then we will share them okay share these folders and put SMB share permissions over these folders using the SMB share permission script after doing this we will use the NTFS share permission script to create 
the remaining permissions or the last permissions so this is are the steps for creating the shared folders and having permissions okay after sharing these folders we will take these shared folders and map them to the user okay with a, a mapping group policy so this we will do it in this video i will show it how practically we will do it actually actually i will i will not uh, be able to show you all how this practically is done because i didn't record it but it was uh, uh, done in the previous playlists like for example dc comics and mass effect uh, playlist and uh, throne legacy uh, playlist and a star trek playlist okay but this is the concept and then we will what we will begin here we will begin working with the wsos remember that i have told you before that the wsos it is a central location okay it a server will go to the internet and download the different windows updates okay on the server on the hard disk and then it will begin distributing these updates to the workstations okay and to the servers okay and how these workstations and servers will know that they need to communicate with the WSOS this will be done using a group policy so we'll push a group policy to the workstations telling them with the IP of the WSOS server okay and the location so they can communicate with the server and get the updates and the same will be done for the servers okay but why we have two group policies okay because there is some differences why don't we put one group policy to uh, tell the workstation and the servers together to communicate with the WSOS because there is a little differences between these two group policies and I, will, I have told you before that these differences uh, uh, I said before will be uh, done or why these differences because uh, because in, in a normal situation if you are at home and you need to install uh, a Windows uh, update you need to go to the uh, control panel and tell him windows updates and then to tell him to check the updates and then download the updates and then install the update and then restart the pc all of this is done by the user okay in a work group okay or in a normal situation at your home for example but what if we are in a domain in a domain we will have a group policy okay that will download the update for the user and install the update for the user and restart the pc for the user all of this will be done using a WSOS policy and this will be done for the workstations okay so this will be done for the workstations okay but what about the servers this is for the workstation as for the servers the situation is different in the servers we need only uh, the group policy to download the update only and the administrator will install the updates and restart the server by himself because the server needs to be online 24 7 and it contains critical information and it should be working 24 7 as I said before so it should not be restarted automatically this should be planned you need to tell your users that in a certain time the servers will not be available so they can uh, finish their work and let you restart the server safely so this will be done using a WSOS server policy okay so this is why we have two group policies so the group policy will tell the servers to go to uh, the WSOS to get their updates and it will tell them also this group policy to only download the updates this is for the servers as for the workstations the group policy uh, for the workstations will tell them to communicate with the WSOS to get their updates and to download and install and restart the PCs uh, automatically so how we can see this this will be done using these three group policies this is a group policy telling them the WSOS IP address and its location and this is a group policy that will only download the update and let the admin uh, install and restart the server this is auto download and notify for install and the time as for this one it will be auto download and schedule install we will see this practically but I need just to refresh your mind how this is done so let's see how this is done uh, using the uh, or how this will be done practically so let's go there and begin working with this one so here you go we will go and begin the installation so we will go to the WSOS policy okay this is for the work stations so we will go and tell him okay to 
remember it will be applied to the workstations only so here we need to go to the policies and tell him the WSOS server name and the location but before that I need to make something called software installation I need to install 7-zip program for all of the workstations in the domain automatically so we need to do this from the WSOS policy I will tell him to go and install this program from a shared folder okay that contains so we have I have a shared folder that contains the source of the 7-zip program it's a program for installing or it's a program for uh, zipping and compressing uh, zipping and decompressing file or compressing and decompressing files it is in a location that it is shared so this is it we'll go to the backgrounds remember I have discussed this before so it's an MSI file it will be uh, shared okay or it will be installed automatically to all of the computers in the domain okay here it is <coughs> okay and then what we will do here we will go and begin uh, informing or this is the workstations group policy we will tell them through it the IP or the uh, the name of the WSOS server okay and configure the uh, way the updates will be downloaded and installed so here we'll go to administrative templates <coughs> and then we will go to Windows or go I think to Windows components and then Windows update and then we will go and tell him specify intranet so this is here the name of the WSOS server and the port this is it and then we will configure and we'll tell him just a moment so here we can go a little bit further again so this is the name of the WSOS server okay this is the name of the server and the port that the workstations need to communicate to the WSOS to it so this is the name of the WSOS server and the port of the WSOS server okay this is the name this is very critical and then we will tell him what's he how to configure the updates so here he will auto download he will download the updates automatically and install the updates automatically and restart the, s the workstation automatically this is will be for the workstations the servers will have a completely different WSOS policy okay So this is it and then we need to have uh, a group policy for servers what we how we will do this group policy uh, there is two kinds of group policies there is an active directory group policy this will be configured from here and there is a local group policy every windows have something called local group policy okay the same as the active directory group policy the same setting and everything but it will be locally it will be only for this PC or this workstation or this server okay but as for the active directory group policy it will be for all of the workstations and the servers so the local group policy will only be will only be applied to the server okay so at what I will do I will go to the local group policy of each server and configure the, uh, uh, the, the WSOS policy for them especially for them I will see I will show you all this in a moment as for the mapping group policy this is another policy that we will use okay to map the shared network or the shared department uh, folders okay to the users so here if you go to driver maps and then open it here we can see that that we have for example this is the HR shared folder location and it will be mapped as an M drive this is the IT folder it will be uh, shared folder and it will be mapped as an M and this is the HOD folder it will be mapped as N and we will see the setting for every shared folder or mapped shared folder here we can see for example if you open it we can see here that this is the location of the shared folder and this is the label or this is the name that will be shared okay or it will appear as we see in the widow remember that I've showed you if we can see here for example this uh, let me show you all this graph so here we can see that if we go there let me have uh, give you a look 
so here we can see that it's label HR this is the one HR okay and it's an M drive so here we can see that this it will be label HR and it will be mapped as an M and show this drive and then create the mapped network drive so you need the action to create a network map drive for this shared folder it will be labeled as HR you need to reconnect it so if it is disconnected for every reason you need to reconnect it again it will be mapped as an M drive labeled as HR this is the location this is the action and show and it will be shared or will appear for a certain active directory group so we'll see this now in a moment common we need here to just a moment here we need to apply it once so we need to apply this mapping once because the mapping should be done once and it will be uh, tar targeting a certain active directory group okay for example this is the uh, share or the for the HR so this share will be mapped as a network map drive for the active directory group of the HR so we will see that now in a moment here we can see it will be mapped to the HR members HR active directory group members so the user should be a member of this group so if a user is a member of the HR Active Directory group this shared mapped drive will appear for him so here we can see that we go to the M drive okay this is the IT the same applies here okay and then targeting here we can see this for the IT group apply and okay and then this is the HOD the same targeting HOD applying the OK and the last one for the global share common and then apply or targeting here we see global share OK and apply and OK so this is the network map drives we need here to configure the WSOS policy for the servers okay we have done this for the workstations remember that will be applied to the robots organizational unit and the terminals organizational unit these are two organizational unit that contains the workstations as for the servers they are in a different organizational unit and they will have different group policy applied to them so here we, for example we will go to the local group policy so we'll see that now in a moment so here I will go and tell him start and then run and then by typing GP edit this is the local group policy for this server this is the local group policy for this server this is not the active directory group policy this is the local group policy so we'll have a local group policy we'll start and then type run and then GP edit dot dot msc we can see that the local group policy is exactly the same uh, in shape and type like the active directory group policy one will ask who have the presidents or if you have two group policies one for the active directory and one for the local which will be dominant the active directory group policy so here we will go to the administrative templates and then windows components and then we will have the windows updates and then we will tell him specify uh, an intranet location so here for example this is the uh, configure automatic updates here we will tell him to uh, auto download and notify for install so this is different uh, the workstations we will auto download and install but this we will auto download and notify the administrator that it's sh the updates need to be installed so this is different okay then apply and OK <coughs> and then we need to specify the intranet then tell him enable OK so tell him enable OK we need to tell him the WSOS uh, uh, IP or the, uh, the WSOS name tell him enable OK and then put the WSOS server OK the location and if there is a statistics intranet server and an alternative download server if you have an alternative or you have two W sources for example or have uh, additional W source server so you can put all of this in this uh, fields so we'll do this for this server and for the other server as well
so we'll go there again and we'll configure the local group policy for for this server and tell him to make the updates as I said before and then after configuring this WSOS policy we will create uh, a new virtual machine and make it a workstation and join the domain and see it if it will get updates and we'll have our Active Directory login script applied and a lot of things so here we'll go to administrative templates again then windows components and then go to the windows updates and then we will go to the specify intranet or configure automatic updates and then enable and then auto download and notify for install apply and ok and then specify the intranet and then enable and then have the WSOS server uh, name and uh, port so we'll do this and then we go to the WSOS console and begin to see if there is any uh, servers or workstations that had registered themselves in the WSOS so the servers need to communicate with the WSOS uh, to tell them or to tell him that I need updates and we will see if they are uh, able to communicate to the WSOS from the WSOS console here we can see that the WSOS is not working because the database attached to this WSOS uh, service is not running so you will see that now internal database it's not running so we need to make it run So here we go and refresh our reset server node and then before so you need to see if the computers are registered here or the servers will appear here before doing this we need to synchronize with the Microsoft website to get the updates we didn't do this in the previous video we need to tell him to synchronize so before uh, checking the computers we need to sync first to the Microsoft website to get the updates to uh, push them to the uh, the servers and the workstations okay so we need to synchronize first we need to do this okay here I'm checking the W source uh, sorry I'm checking the uh, winds service <coughs> anyway we we need to go and see if all computers we need to see if any computers are registered in the assigned computers I said before that most of the computers register themselves with the WSOS in this container so here if we make a refresh still we didn't see any computers uh, communicating with the WSOS okay so we need first to sync first this should be a critical step so here I will, I will restart this, the both servers so the local group policy to be applied to them okay so they can communicate with the WSOS so the group policy will tell the servers to communicate with the WSOS okay I think we can pass it real quickly here so we can go there and we go again and then if you go there so I think this the restart the updates anyway so this is not it here we can see something if we go again if we go to the uh, we go to the control panel or we go to the setting of the server and check the windows updates then advanced options what we will see we will see that it's configured by a GP so the windows updates are configured by a group pulse which is the WSOS or the local WSOS group policy <coughs> I will show you all this here here we can see that it's all configured by the group policy okay so I think I need we need to get a little bit further here so uh, we will go and configure so here we do not see anything anyway so still there is no updates or there is no uh, servers assigned here just a moment so here 
we can go there so there is no still computers registered to this uh, to the WSOS so here we can see that still there is no or what I have done I have here I go to the unassigned computers and make the status here to any not failed or needed and refresh what we will see that we can see that our first server will appear so if we tell him unassigned and then go and check you will see that our server is here here we will take one of these workstations name and create a virtual machine by this name okay so we need to uh, make it to uh, join the domain and see if we'll get updates so here properties and then get the name okay we'll get this name and then we make a new virtual machine so we'll go there and then we'll make a folder in the virtual machines by the name of this machine okay and then we will make it like this and then we'll make a new virtual machine so we'll go to the uh, go to the VM workstation pro program <coughs> this is our some updates but they are not from the WSOS not to make confused because they are uh, from the internet or from the website directly here we'll create a new virtual machine next then we will tell him to install the operating system later we tell him that we need it to be Windows 10 uh, 64 bit so we will have a workstation to join the domain and see the different things we'll see the WSOS updates the active directory login script the group policies all of these this virtual machine will be in a folder that we have created recently or from a couple of seconds so we'll do this <coughs> okay here it is and then we tell him next and then we need to give it as I said before maximum or at least 100 or 200 gigabyte 150 for the C or the partition that will uh, be used for the operating system here we have a RAM of 1 gigabyte because I don't have a lot of RAM and we'll give it one processor okay and it will be connected to the network VMNet8 which is the same network that the servers are attached to VMNet8 and okay and then we have to insert a DVD this operating system will be Windows 10 Enterprise or Windows 10 Pro professional with an office installed on it so here I will attach uh, a D, uh, the, the ISO image that contains the uh, Windows 10 Pro okay with uh, office included office so here we'll go to the DVD okay this is the important CD images and then we will have the Windows 10 Pro okay Windows 10 Enterprise maybe or Windows 10 Pro okay Windows 10 Pro with the office included and then we will change the uh, BIOS system or we we'll change the system of this virtual machine to be BIOS firmware not UFI firmware we have discussed before what is a BIOS and what is UFI and then we will power the virtual machine and install the operating system so still this is some updates but this is not it so we will make if we go there again and go to the computers and assign and make a refresh here we can see that the first uh, server appeared so the group policy is working perfectly here we can see also that there is one computer de detected which is the first domain controller and then the second domain controller will appear and after uh, joining this workstation to the domain we need to see if it will get updates from the WSOS <coughs> so I think the video is to be over soon 
so let's see if we can make it more quickly control panel and then we go to the uh, windows internal database so this is DC Marvel this is the first one appearing so I hope this video is informative for you all and would like to thank you all for viewing the app in the next video we will discuss joining the workstation to the domain and configuring other things thank you so much